Uh, so basically what I'm going to talk about is really other people's work, by and large. Um, I'm very pleased that this has become quite an international collaboration. So much of the work presently is being done by Chi Wei Xiao uh, on the engineering side, and um, I see that uh, Raul um, Cheto is here, Catherine Rennie will be speaking, and um, Charlotte uh, McIntyre also. I got into this quite by uh, chance, actually, because a student of mine was also uh, had a brother who was a student of uh, Neil Tolley's. Um, and he asked, could you model flow in the nose? And little did I know then how complicated that was going to be. So I'm going to talk uh, very briefly uh, some historical points and some things which I think uh, we should perhaps bear in mind in our journey to try to understand what's happening. Uh, so forward is uh, this one. Yes. Uh, so, as I say, I'm going to look very briefly at some of the historical foundations, looking at the Bernoulli relation, which uh, I think is a fundamental principle, and then some ideas with respect to the 3D virtual airway and the use of computational fluid dynamics, some ideas in terms of our progress in validating models, how we reconcile airflow and geometry, sinusoidal exchange is an important topic, heat and humidification, aerosol transport, the dynamic airway, and resistance and other issues. And then finally, what is it taking uh, to make CFD into a useful clinical tool? So there's Daniel Bernoulli. His father uh, was Johannes Bernoulli. He actually uh, came into the area against his father's wishes. His father wanted him to be a, a successful merchant, but eventually he relented and he studied medicine. His first work actually was on uh, the mechanics of breathing. Uh, and it's an important uh, lesson for us because he fell out with his father over academic jealousy. Um, and so it's something, a lesson, I think, in terms of collaboration that we mustn't uh, be too, if you like, jealous of our work and be uh, keen to share it with others because these are very large problems. But in terms of Bernoulli, there's his relation, and mostly we just uh, simplify it. There are many terms there which cover steady and unsteady flows. But if we just look at his basic idea, the relation between pressure and the, the speed of flow, it was a revolution at the time. Physicians were starting to stick glass-pointed needles into people's arms to measure pressure. And this is in the ideal case. We see that pressure goes up or down in accordance with the flow of the velocity. Uh, so the, flow, the velocity of the flowing fluid. In reality, of course, uh, oh, and so I should mention also, if you come across cardiologists, they do something which is an absolute abomination to engineers. They write it as delta P is four times the difference in velocity squared. That's because if you choose this weird combination of units, millimeters of mercury, and density in SI units, you get a number four, which cardiologists like very much. But I think we prefer definitely to stick to the original form. So in terms of um, losses, now inside the airways, of course, there are many areas of restriction. And I think it's quite useful to bear in mind the whole idea of, a, uh, of the different mechanisms for loss, frictional resistance losses versus orifice losses, uh, which can be characterized generally in terms of some uh, coefficient. And all the time it's useful to try to relate what we do in a very complex three-dimensional model to very simple relations to see is this telling us something simple that we could try to find an approximation? Or just in terms of looking at progression of maybe a restriction, how would this be likely to scale? So all the time we try to simplify what we're doing in terms of simple scalings, because I believe they are most useful to us. In fact, orifice has come into many areas. This is Ms. Schilling, actually. Ms. Schilling's orifice was developed to prevent um, high-performance aircraft in the 40s from cutting out. The English design was for a float carburetor. The Germans were much smarter. They used direct fuel injection. Ms. Schilling found the solution by using a small orifice plate, and so that's why it was called Ms. Schilling's orifice. Interestingly, actually, on the um, automotive theme, Ms. Schilling was famous for being one of the first people to complete the Brooklyn circuit at over 100 miles per hour. And she wouldn't marry her husband until he performed the same feat. So you can see that my wife had lower standards. <laughs> Um, now, in terms of uh, flow in the nose, uh, let's see if this will, will work. You can see that there are obviously areas of restriction and recirculation. Uh, <coughs> but we notice also there are some significant differences between what we do in CFD and what is measured. And I'm delighted to see that this is going to be a topic of one of the uh, speakers uh, later today. 
Uh, so in terms of the progress we've made, well, we started off uh, in terms of very s simple models, um, time average models, and we're now moving towards looking at the unsteadiness and the flow progressing as computer technology has evolved through large eddy simulation and maybe direct numerical simulation and new methods in terms of, um, for example, lattice Boltzmann methods or pure Cartesian methods. All of these are coming towards us and I like this image. This is the Mari Nostrum computer in Barcelona and it's placed in a church. I'm not sure if this is telling us something about where religion is going in the future. Uh, maybe it's something you have to be cautious about. In terms of validation, well, this technique of using a um, rapid prototype machine to make a model which we can then gradually make disappear so we can model the flow by using refractive index matching um, has been uh, used in many areas and I s still see some use for that and I see that Professor Chung is, is here somewhere uh, and his colleague Kim were pioneers in this area. Um, in terms of modeling function, well, heat and humidification is a very important function in the nose. Some very early work uh, by Wolf, Natalie Schroeder, and the lad looked at this. And then also, of course, uh, uh, Tillman Keck and Professor Lindemann, who is here also, have done some uh, very important work in this. And, and then the application of this, how does this feed in, uh, has been looked at, of course, uh, by um, our, our speaker later today, Professor Garcia. So these are important areas, and important progress has been made in these areas. In terms of the challenges that remain, I think a big challenge actually is, how is, is in how we describe geometry. It's uh, really a challenge for us. Uh, there are methods we've looked at, Fourier descriptors, skeletonization. I know other people looked at harmonic maps. But I think it, this is a, a mathematical challenge because it will be important in terms of looking at modalities of variation. So this is a, an area, a key area for research I think is quite incomplete. Likewise, uncertainty quantification, the fact that there are myriad uncertainties in how we produce models, how people's uh, nasal structure varies, that's an, another uh, important topic we must be very mindful of. Uh, because it's not like a well-defined engineering system where everything is easily categorized. The mechanics of aerosol transport, well, there's a huge amount of physics in there involved, which I think we are still quite uncertain at. How we, particles approach the surface, how they, get, how they adhere, that's an important area. And likewise, how, their up, how uptake happens. We require more validation. Uh, I mentioned airway resistance. Dynamic airway movement is a very challenging area. Personally, I'm a little bit skeptical of fluid structure interaction because, of course, the structures are very complex uh, attachments, David, and they're also innervated. So I'm very much in favor of dynamic airway imaging and then looking at what that it does to the flow, but I'm not so much in favor of trying to say we know exactly what the structure is doing. And then we need a realistic appraisal of CFD as a surgical planning aid. We must be realistic about this. And I'm going to finish now uh, with just um, sort of an introduction to what we'll hear later on in terms of the difference between uh, measurements which are made and CFD often we find this is a very interesting thing which I think um, all in the community are aware of and we're looking forward to that. So I hope that's given you a, a very quick and brief overview to keep to time of some of the areas which I think are important and some of the challenges that await us. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs>